time for one more? Yes. I'm, um, I'm curious, it seems like you have such a specific idea about the language. Is it hard for you to work with an illustrator sometimes? No. No. Because you, you've had a whole variety of different illustrators illustrate your picture books. But. Yeah. Jerry Pinkney is the only person I ask for. Mm. And uh, I'm proud to say the Dillons are going to do my next book. And I'm so proud of that. That is a dream come true to have the Dillons. Now, they did the cover of Days of Jubilee. That's their artwork on the cover, and I just love it. But they're doing the whole book of, uh, of one that I'm working on. Well, they're working on it now. I finished it, and it's called Never Forgotten, so look for it. It's a good book. It will be a good book. But no, I don't have anything to do with who will illustrate my books. I don't really want to get involved with that because my editor and my art director at Swartz Wade Books at Random House is very good at selecting artists who will work well with my work. And I've never been disappointed, never been disappointed. Now, I looked at my um, Precious of the Boo Hag, which I did with a storyteller by the name of Onawumi, Jean Moss. And I'm telling you, that was the homeless looking little girl I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but she was our Precious. and. <laughs> And so we fell in love with her after we got used to looking at her. But she was rough, <laughs> she was rough there for a while. Ooh, she was rough for a while. And the witch, oh, the witch was, oh my goodness, she was even worse that we, you know, you don't want the witch to scare the children to death. And this one didn't scare them, it make them laugh. She was just, oh, anyway. <laughs> It wasn't the artwork, it was just how they looked that took it away from, from um, for me. But other than that, I've been very excited about uh, the artwork that my illustrators have done. And I don't get involved in who's going to illustrate it and, and what they're going to illustrate. And they always send me the artwork, they send me the sketches. Because I don't get in the artist. Oh, he should put a, he should have an umbrella over here. He should have a dog, you know. No. There, the picture book is a 50% shared project. The author is 50%, the writer is 50%. And you share that. Now, the writer wants to take, well, the first time I heard Jerry Pinkney say, my Miranda and Brother Wynn, <laughs> your Miranda and Brother Wynn, mm -hmm. but it is his. Think about it. It's his Miranda and Brother Wynn as well as mine. He gave her the way she looks. If I had written her and described her, she wouldn't look at all like what Jerry drew. But now she has a look, and everybody knows her by the way she looks because of Jerry Pinkney. So when he says, my Mirandi, my Mirandi and Brother Will, he has every much right to say that as I do. And that's so hard for a lot of writers to come to grips with. They want to tell the illustrator what to illustrate. Or they want to pay someone to illustrate it for them. They want a best friend to do it. And that you can get a best friend to do it. But sell your manuscript first and then say to the art director, I'd like for you to see my friend's work. Because most of the time, they won't look at projects that come in like that. Because it is the sign of an amateur writer. So keep that in mind if you've got a project out there. Sell the manuscript first. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I just wanted to thank you, Mrs. McKissick, for coming out to talk with us tonight. And um, uh, it was an honor to hear some of your stories in person. Um, I have a 
personal, selfish question. I'm wondering when you are out um, speaking with these women um, about, well, I have a seven month old at home. I'd love to hear the tips you have for um, <laughs> teething, soothing teething. <laughs> you know one of the things they told me? Take the baby's sock and put an egg in it and tack it over a door that they go through. Now what, that, that's the <laughs> truth. Now, could I make that up? Could I we'll make that it. up? <laughs> and I'm sitting there listening, I'm going, put an egg in the baby's sock. Now, what, what does that have to do with it? They said, do that, it'll help them. <laughs> I'll give it a try, why not? <laughs> try it, call me if it works. <laughs> Because I have no little ones anymore. <laughs> but I see the way they cry and carry on with their teeth, and I try it, I would at least. <laughs> you want to know how to make uh, boysenberry jelly? <laughs> well, thank you so very, very much for doing this. I would like to thank Patricia McKissick, and in doing so, in thinking of many, many books she has written, I'm reminded of the words of, Paul, of uh, Emily Polson. These words can apply to her books. Books are keys to wisdom's treasure. Books are gates to lands of pleasure. Books are paths that upward lead. Books are friends. Come, let us read. And so it is with her books. We are able to open gates, have friends, look upward, and through all of this, bring these books of all cultures together throughout the year so that you are extending the dimensions of literature for children and also extending the knowledge of the world they still have to know. I normally at this time introduce who we are speaker for next year. We're still in a process of having an acceptance. So at this time, there'll be no announcement now, but there will be forthcoming. I do want to thank you very much for having us had tonight. Patricia McKissick, thank you. Well, that concludes our evening, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, uh, I'd like to thank Patricia also for a, a really a delightful presentation. Uh, she described her writing as an art and a craft, and I describe it as a, her stories as a great blessing for all of us, and I thank you so very, very much. Of course, uh, at this, uh, for this event, I've been introducing uh, Spencer Shaw now for some several years, um, and uh, each year I get older and Spencer gets younger. <laughs> um, each year her, his accomplishments grow and, uh, and my introduction gets longer and longer. This year, I trimmed it down a little intentionally so that we'd at least have time for Patricia to make a few remarks. Uh, but of course we owe this evening each year to uh, a dear friend, somebody that we respect um, and indeed cherish and love, um, uh, a professor emeritus in the information school called Spencer G. Shaw. And uh, I'd like our last round of applause to go to him. Please.